So within networking, we already spoke about firewalls, but there are other configurations we can add to our virtual machine to make it more flexible. The first is the use of network tags. And once again, network tags are just names we can add to our virtual machines that we can that we can refer to with other uh, networking uh, resources. So let's say we have a load balancer and we want load balancer to, let's say, hit all our WordPress, say WordPress instances, then we can give it the network tag WordPress and all load balancer forward all traffic to WordPress. It's just a convenience means, a convenience method of routing traffic. Um, it's optional, as you can see over here. At the same time, uh, network tags also apply to firewall rules. So let's say you're creating your own custom firewall rules. You can, uh, if your virtual machines have a particular network tag, let's say WordPress, those firewall, you can simply just apply those firewall rules to that network tag and it will apply to all the virtual machines with the, the WordPress network tag. So you can create multiple network tags for your virtual machines and you can go ahead and mix and match the firewall rules to whatever specification you want. The next option is you have the ability to customize the host name for your instance. And this is particularly just a name that your instance can be referred to. For instance, if it's so if it's, if it's within a network and you're using some form of internal DNS, you can use the host name to route traffic between um, VMs within that same network. The next thing is your network interfaces. And what's cool about creating uh, instances on GCE is that you can attach a virtual machine to many different networks. And so you imagine having two networks and at the center, you can have a particular VM that has access to both networks. And that VM that has access to both networks can act as some form of um, bastion or uh, even a, like a load balancer. So you can install something like Nginx on this uh, virtual machine. It can proxy traffic that's coming between these two different networks. At the same time, you may have requirements where certain VMs should be able to exist within or have access to other instances within different networks. And so this flexibility really gives you the chance to customize your network configurations and the use of VMs in a way that's malleable to your specifications. So when I click within this network interfaces section, I have the ability to go ahead and um, define the network that this VM is going to be in. But remember, I can define multiple network interfaces. In this particular instance, I only have one network defined, which is the default one that Google will create for a project. And because Google has already created this default network, it assigns uh, different IP address ranges to a particular subnet. What, what I have the power to go ahead and do is reserve things like internal IP addresses, which I'm going to go do here. Let's say I just want, I'll call this my WordPress IP. Say it's called WordPress internal IP. And I, I can have the ability to choose. And I'll just say, hey, 10.128. And I'll just select an IP address range within the CIDR range. So 10.128.0.0. One is fine, actually, that two is fine. Um, interesting thing is zero is being used by the, I think the network itself. One is in use by the gateway and you can't use 250, but you can use 255. So let's pick some, some number that's not taken. Two should be fine. The moment you click reserve, you can reserve that internal IP address, which is awesome. And I also have the ability to go ahead and reserve an external IP. However, I don't have the ability to state what IP address that is. Google will automatically create an external IP address for me to allocate it for me, but it will not allow me to choose what IP address that is. So let's call it WordPress external IP. Let's say reserve. Google will go ahead and give me whatever available IP address it has. So next thing we can talk about is the network service tiers. And so if you select, um, if you create your own IP address, by the way, or reserve an IP address, you may, uh, what typically happens is that you forfeit the ability to select the this network service tier that you may have. So if you just select uh, ephemeral, meaning Google gets to select, um, uh, Google gets to recycle IP address every single time your IP address, uh, I mean, your instance restarts, you end up getting the ability to select the network service tier. And for the most part, a premium network service tier gives you the ability and more features to involve other resources like um, global load balancing or things like cloud CDN or a VPNs, um, that comes only exclusively of the premium tier. However, if you use the standard tier, you get to, you, you unfortunately end up forfeiting um, some of the great benefits of using Glo Google's um, global network. The next section you have control over is IP forwarding. And if you want your instance to act as a, let's say a load balancer or some form of proxy, um, selecting, turning this on would be a benefit to you. So typically um, you can't have a VM by default. You can't really have a virtual machine that forwards IP packets. However, if you turn it on, you can now run things like Nginx and other proxies that can serve as intermediaries and forward packets to other virtual machines and other resources. And this can just give you extra flexibility in case you want to have your own proxy running that shuffles uh, traffic in and out of your uh, services. And so last but not least, you have the ability to um, set up your DNS pointer record 
that allows for the reverse DNS lookup. So what you'd put in here is a pointer domain name and you can use the domain name as some form of reverse lookup to validate the ownership of a particular IP address. And so in most cases, um, things like mail servers end up using pointer addresses because most of the mail providers would typically mark mail as spam that do not have valid reverse DNS configurations. So if it's important for you to um, have that tight relationship between your host name and your IP address, um, having a pointer domain name inserted over here would be of benefit. So if you're running a mail server on this particular virtual machine, this is something that you may want to consider. But we're not doing that, so we're good. 